three, two, one. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Hunting Gear Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Johnson, and today we're joined by Paul Anir. Did I say your name right, Paul? Paul yep, you Anir? Get it. You get it right every time. Yeah. Hey, man, that's great <laughs> because the last guy he had, uh, the last guy I talked to on one of the Nine Finger Chronicles podcast, his name was like all consonants, and I didn't. I didn't know how to say it, so I just let him say it, and I, you know, I don't even try. I don't even try on some of these names. So, <laughs> Paul, man, uh, we're gonna have a fun, fun turkey hunting convert turkey hunting gear conversation today, and this the information that you are about to hear is from two guys who are not so serious about turkey hunting. And so I think I'm going to title this episode like not so serious turkey hunting gear or something, something along those lines. Is that, uh, is that cool? That's pretty accurate. Cause yeah, I'm not a super hardcore turkey hunter. Like I go, but I was yeah. in, uh, I was in track throughout high school and college then. And I, uh, I could hardly turkey hunt at all. And so, yeah, I'm not a, uh, an expert turkey hunter. So that is a perfect title. What, uh, what has your turkey hunting experience been throughout your life? So, yeah, like I said, I, I started out turkey hunting as a young kid, like my dad, super into hunting. We had a, I grew up on like hundred acres basically. So I always went turkey hunting. Um, and my dad would always take me and stuff like that. But, um, I absolutely hated getting up so early in the morning for turkey hunting. <laughs> I, I struggled with that really bad when I was, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever that age was. Like I did the whole learn to hunt program, even though my dad could have done it all himself. He just wanted me to like get that social aspect of hunting with turkeys and stuff. So I did that. Yeah. Um, and I remember, I remember coming back. I, I was like getting super impatient. I think I was probably 12 or 13. And I remember telling my mentor, like, I'm like ready, you know, ready to go or whatever. And you know, he looks at his watch. So it's like, well, it's, you know, 645. We should probably <laughs> stay out here a little longer, you know? So I just remember my first memories just being super impatient as a turkey hunter. Oh, yep. And, and then obviously, well, I didn't have any early success. So that didn't help. I just, I don't know what it was. I, I, I mean, I went plenty of times and, you know, we stuck it out and, um, but never had early success. And then I got into high school and I was really into track and I went to, um, university of Wisconsin for track. And so I was obviously took that really serious and I, you know, getting up super early and then trying to, you know, still do sports and all that just wasn't really conducive for, for track and field. So I never really hunted hard in high school. And then I did division one track for I redshirted so I did that for five years and then all of a sudden I graduated from college um and then I kind of got into it a little bit more once I got married and before we had kids and had uh I've had like some success since then but really I mean I've only shot like a handful of turkey so for people that are like new turkey hunters this will be pretty good because I can learn right right alongside everybody else I mean I right. I love it like when it happens and when a turkey finally commits and you get one it's an awesome truly an awesome feeling like it's just as addicting to me as it is bow hunting it's just i haven't had as much much success like turkey hunting um as i have hunting whitetails so i'm a pretty yeah. novice turkey hunter yeah yeah um that's uh that's funny because i didn't start turkey hunting until i got a picture on the wall over there of me next to my uncle 2021 is or excuse me tw 2000 <laughs> 2021 2001 is when okay. i shot my first turkey so i was i was i would have been 20 years old 20 20 or 21 years old right around there yep. and that was my my first hunting experience was pretty sweet to be honest with you because i went with my uncles and they showed me the ropes right away and we yep. didn't do any of this blind type hunting that some people you I know, didn't get get raised up. It is prop your butt against the tree, call. Yep. If they don't come in, get closer, call, move, and, and you're just playing chess all day long yep. with these birds. And and we didn't really do mornings or afternoons or anything like that. We would go and then 
when it started, when they started to roost, that's when we would leave, right? We'd locate them and then we'd leave. And man, we would take naps out in the woods, right? I mean, we would, oh, yeah. it was, it was nothing like cutthroat at all, but if yep. the turkeys would stop calling, we'd chill, maybe go back to the truck, eat a sandwich, um, you know, crack some beers or whatever. And then we would, you know, go out, try to hit, hit it again, hit the afternoon. But man, I just, I remember having so much fun doing that because time w was not an issue. I, I didn't have any place to be other than in the woods. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was just, that, that to me is what turkey hunting is really all about. Being mobile, being in woods, playing that game with them. And, and uh, sometimes it can be frustrating, but sometimes it can be really fun. Yeah, I agree because like, and I grew up the same way. We didn't use blinds at all. Like my dad, he was a minimalist and still is like, he just, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not a hunting technology guy. So when he helps me with trail cameras and stuff, he's actually pretty good with it, but it's just funny because he's a total minimalist. So I grew up, yep. Leaning up against big oak trees, like that mm -hmm. same type of thing, run and gun them. Oh, they're over here. Okay. Let's get up and move. And yeah, with turkey hunting, I actually, I enjoy it because I just love being in the spring woods here and things come alive and seeing things grow and you know, watch fawns or whatever while you're out in early may and stuff like that and there's and for people like me and you who are kind of like quote unquote in the industry it's a little more low-key and less pressure right mm -hmm. we put this stupid pressure on ourselves to kill whitetails and it's i'm just i'm trying to get over it. it's the dumbest thing ever right and so yeah. turkey um for me is just more of like just fun you know hey i'll take my eight-year-old son out with me and okay if you're impatient okay we'll just go home like i'll go yeah. back out at one o'clock and probably still have just as good a chance to kill one at one o'clock as i would at you know 5 30 right off the roost or something like that like right it's just, it's just different for me and for like you and i and hardcore whitetail hunters who who just don't take it as serious and so it's a little bit more i guess enjoyable just to kind of like let your hair down per se and just relax and be in the woods and enjoy it for what it is whereas in the fall you're freezing cold you're not seeing stuff like two ridges over the rut could be just crazy and you're not you're not seeing anything like that that gets to me and it shouldn't but it does and i <laughs> and i i came home real cranky a couple times last fall <laughs> and like my wife is like you, know, you get that what did i do <laughs> yeah that, exactly <laughs> Well, and then she'll like put you in your place and be like, yeah. what are, like, are you even having fun? And, no, yeah. actually I'm not having fun. Yeah. And for some reason, you know, I got to change that. Um, so for that reason, I guess turkey hunting is really enjoyable. It's just go yeah. out have fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I look at, okay. So my daughter's in wrestling, right. And I can kind of like, I, I really like going deer hunting. Right. I, I do enjoy it. But when I'm in what I call kill mode, yeah, and that's that that's that vacation space. Th yes. That's not that's not really like when I go out a weekend in October or something like that. But when I when I yep. say, OK, work is done, family's done, I, I'm going into kill mode right now. Yep. That is when my mind kind of shifts a little bit and mm -hmm. it becomes a different type of fun. The fun comes just like uh, what my daughter was explaining how she doesn't like wrestling. She likes wrestling, but she doesn't like wrestling practice because obviously wrestling practice is extremely difficult. Yep. And, but she does like wrestling in these tournaments and things. And so I kind of look at it this way, where the, the, the long sits, the r extreme cold temperatures or the extreme hot temperatures or wind or snow or rain. That's mm -hmm. not that honestly, that's not that fun. Yeah. going through some of that oh, stuff but the not. moment that the <laughs> moment that that big buck steps out and he's walking right towards you that's when yeah all the fun happens in like a one minute window exactly it's crazy crazy yeah, it is yeah no it's like did the kansas city chiefs have much fun this year during their regular season no probably not yeah. but come yeah. playoffs like you said they got it they you know as like a sports comparison they got in kill mode and they won mm -hmm. the freaking Super Bowl. Like, it's the same thing. Like, you could have just absolute three, four days of, like, knockdown, drag out, just complete crap hunting where you're just dragging yourself out of bed, yeah. trying to find reasons to keep going. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it happens and you win your quote-unquote Super Bowl with, with deer hunting. Yep. You know, it's, yeah, it's, 
it's just the the roller coaster of the deer hunting is just so i find it just so much different than turkey hunting and that's i think yeah. that's why i enjoy it and just the weather overall i mean typically it's yeah you can have cold turkey hunting but i mean you know it's just it's really enjoyable to be in the spring woods and i i take yeah. it for what it is with that you know yeah i'll say this it's hard to be like like there's certain scenarios in in life where you you wish you could be trapped like if, if this is my uh oh what's that called they say before you go to heaven oh purgatory if my purgatory is like these special moments i could stay in purgatory forever right yeah, like right yeah and one of those moments that i absolutely love is if is if i'm turkey hunting a certain weekend and it coincides when the morel mushrooms are popping yeah yep. dude i'll tell you what i love i love that combination and then going into maybe like a farm pond after the hunt's over trying to catch some panfish and then yep. like creating a meal out of that that is a moment those moments is are are what i absolutely love mm -hmm. yep no I, I love that too yeah morale hunting is fun in the mm -hmm. spring i i really enjoy doing that and i feel like turkey hunting is just more of like a in springtime events in general like even shed hunting you can involve your kids more in it and it's just yep. like um it's more enjoyable and like you said yeah i'm the same way when you get in that white tail kill mode you take your three four days vacation to make a long five six day weekend or something you want to kill a deer like yep. early sun, early season hunting, you know, maybe not so much, or you try to go and you think you can kill one, but realistically, I mean, late October and the rut is kill mode. And yep. then with turkey hunting, it's like, okay, yeah, I can involve my kids a little bit more. We can go fishing. We can go morale hunting. We can mess up on a turkey and it's not a big deal or whatever it is. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we better get into talking about hunting gear and equipment uh, here. Is there... <laughs> Like as we were having this little BS session in the back of my head, I was thinking about all the the turkey hunting gear that I have or don't have, and what like what I feel are products that are overrated and underrated and things like that. So I, I just want to start off with your shotgun. Do you do you bow hunt turkeys or do you shotgun hunt? I use a shotgun. Shotgun. Okay. Yeah. Same. Same here. I I don't know if I if I'm gonna make it something easier it's going to be turkey hunting right yeah I, I like the i like bow hunting for whitetails but when it comes to the seasons and how they kind of lay out i don't i don't invest a lot of time so bow hunting would mean i'd probably have to have a blind or build a blind shotgun hunting i just gotta aim and shoot and so exactly. what what kind of shotgun do you have yeah um i have a mossberg i think it's like a five model 535 or something like that it takes up to like three and a half inch i typically use like a three inch load i don't even know what shot i have like five or six or I, to be honest i don't even know i'd have to mm -hmm. look um yeah it does the job like it's uh, i have a nice like little fiber optic sight on the front you know um it's been it's a good gun i i only got that one just a few years ago but yeah i'm with you with um i don't bow hunt for turkeys and maybe someday i might do that but to be honest like and maybe i'm just uninformed but it kind of feels like whenever i watch bow hunting for turkeys i kind of almost view it as like a little not unethical well i get yeah maybe like a little unethical right because like those body shots i think on a turkey if i'm not mistaken you have to be like really like there's a kill zone and then if you're missing that you are like going to wound that bird yeah, um about the size of a that's baseball what it, yeah it feels yeah. like that to me in like whereas deer hunting obviously you got a, a large body cavity and you can you can kill a deer you know with based on angle and all that but with mm -hmm. turkey hunting man i don't know to me it just almost like it's almost a touch unethical and i just i just want to take a gun and be done with it and i yeah. i enjoy shooting firearms like i i rifle hunt for deer and i love shooting guns my dad is kind of a gun nut and so i i enjoy like just shooting guns too so i yeah i take a shotgun and and call it good and uh yeah, my Mossberg, it's nothing special. I think I spent like three, 400 bucks on it mm -hmm. at like a local gun shop. And that's something too, where it's like, man, you see these guys with these crazy shotguns and um, obviously they got really good chokes on them for turkey hunting mm -hmm. and all that. And maybe that's an area I'm just uninformed about too, but it just seems like people can go, you can go overboard with anything, right? Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I have a really basic setup for shotgun turkey hunting. 
Yeah. Uh, 12 or 20. It's a 12 gauge. Yep. 12 gauge. I also have a Mossberg pump action, but it is a 20 gauge and I have killed all, but I think the first year I borrowed my uncle's, uh, 12 gauge. And, and then after that, I got a 20, uh, a 20 gauge and it, dude, I've killed a lot of turkeys with this. I mean, it's just the basic standard site. It is, uh, it, it does its job, man. And it, it, it slays. Now I will say this, the cool thing about it is that once I, once I put a choke on it, 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 it got even better. Okay. And, and I can extend my range and all, all the stuff that goes along with what, it what a choke does to, uh, the pattern. And yep. I, I, I can remember a couple of times before I put that choke on where I'd have a Turkey and he's 20 yards in front of me and I pulled the trigger without the choke. And I'm, I don't know, I'd probably hit him, but I didn't hit him enough to kill him. And it, so I went and I shot it into a piece of like a, a refrigerator box and my my pattern was huge absolutely huge at 20 yards and so i was like uh, i better put a turkey choke on this and, and then once that yeah. once that happened then everything started falling in, in line it became less about the weapon and more about my calling skills trying to get them to come in so yep. um yep. do you when you take your kids have you taken your kids out hunting to where they're the hunter yet no nope. no nope. nope. that's something i'm I don't know my eight-year-old he'll be nine in august and he's still not going to go deer hunting this fall or or turkey hunting or anything this spring yeah. but i'm gonna slowly i i learned to hunt by squirrel hunting and mm. i'm really biased towards like raising kids up that way i don't know mm. what it is i just i think it's such a good way to introduce kids to hunting because if you you know you certainly have to sit down and be patient to turkey or to a uh, squirrel hunt but if you spook mm -hmm. a few or you miss one wait an hour or go to another spot and you're going to see more like yeah. it's just i don't know i think it's a really really good way to introduce kids to hunting it's how i learned to sit tight and be quiet make good shots um because it's a small animal right and so and a 22 that has no recoil um mm -hmm. i just like one thing i'm not going to do is stick my kid with my <laughs> my three and a half inch 12 gauge like i i was terrified <laughs> of recoil when i was a kid I was terrified. I think I cried right. maybe at when I was eight or nine years old and shot my dad's <laughs> shotgun once. I remember we were shooting, we were kind of just walking around this field and my dad kind of wanted to just introduce me to guns a little bit. And I don't know what age I was, but I think I cried after shooting one of his huge 12 gauge mm -hmm. and I, I, it kicked so hard that I was yep. like shocked at yep. what happened. I was, and I'm like, ever since then, I'm, I'm like, nope, I am not. Do we, not to say my dad was super wrong to do that. It's just I'm probably going to put my kid with a, a 20 gauge or even a 410. I know a lot of guys that are using those 410s with that like tungsten shot. And they're TSS, just, yep. Yep. They're wiping out turkeys left and mm -hmm. right. And yep. I'm going to for sure pick up a 410 and, uh, and do that when my kids start hunting. But no, we haven't. None of our kids have started hunting yet. I just... I don't know if they fully understand it and I want them to kind of grasp what they're actually doing before I just stick them with a weapon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, funny you say that, uh, last week, it was Tuesday last week, Wednesday last week, I bought a 410 for one reason for, so my daughter didn't have yep. the kick because yep. she's still a little too small for even yeah. my 20 gauge. Yeah. And, so, and so last year, I got a single shot 20 gauge, hoping it would, it would kick a little less. Yep. Um, and it didn't, it kicked maybe even a little harder than <laughs> the, the Mossberg pump that I have. And so I, and, and so she was, she would shoot it, but she, you could tell she was uncomfortable. You could tell that she was f flinching before the trigger pull. And yep. you know, that's, that's not very good. So I, I went and I got this Ford pen and the guy who sold it to me at Shields was like, Hey man, this thing will this this thing will lay down lay them down right they will especially with with the choke and the tss now here's the issue that i have i'm not a gun guy but holy cow ammunition is expensive it's so five expensive. four ten shotgun shells for 40 bucks 
yep. they're the TSS, right? And so yep. blows my mind that that ammunition is is that expensive. It's crazy expensive. Yeah, that's the one drawback. And I think that tungsten, the TSS stuff is extraordinarily high priced. Um, yeah. But other stuff is too. It, it's still expensive. Yeah. And that, everything yeah, that's is expensive. The, yes. And that's the one thing like with going back to like recoil and stuff like, yeah, you, you don't want your daughter to like obviously develop bad habits. And mm-hmm. man, I don't even enjoy shooting my 12 gauge when I have to go when I go shoot it a few times to pattern it in the spring. Yeah. I hate it. I absolutely despise shooting that thing because it kicks so hard. It's yeah. not that fun to shoot. Um, yeah. And so I, yeah, it's one thing that if anybody takes anything out of this, if you're getting kids into hunting, like pick up a 410 or find something where it's not going to reduce that recoil or get a, a bog pot or a Caldwell thing that they can stick it in, you know, to reduce that recoil. Cause man, it's, it'll freaking scare kids. Cause it did me. Oh, yeah. Like I, yeah. I was terrified of recoil and I still don't enjoy it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My wife won't even shoot. She, well, she's done turkey hunting. She did her five years, <laughs> like a prison, like a prison <laughs> sentence. She did, she did her five years and now she doesn't, she's not really interested in turkey hunting anymore. But I started her out with a, a 12 gauge and that was a mistake. And then finally yeah. I got her into the 20 and she can, she could handle that, which is, which was nice. So, um, yeah, it's expensive. I'm looking forward to not only using that 410, but now that I have it, it's going to be great. Cause now my oldest son, who's also, who's eight, my daughter's 11, my son, actually he turns nine, uh, net in April. And so he'll nice. be, uh, He'll be shooting that gun as well. And I think what I'm going to do is exactly what you said. And I'm not only going to use it for turkey hunting, but I'm going to go out and pepper some small game too. I think that will, that will, you know, walking around, kicking up a rabbit, shooting that. I don't, I don't know what, I'll have to look at the rules and regulations, but what, whatever moves, I'll, I'll shoot it if it's legal. Yeah, for sure. Just getting kids out and getting them in the woods and just developing that sense for the woods. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's what a lot of kids are missing now. And a lot of like adults, like our age and stuff are trying to get their kids into hunting. And I just, not that they're making a mistake, but I just question like, "Mm, what's the motivation here? Like getting your kid out and just sticking them in a blind. She's sitting over a food plot during youth season and they shoot that deer, shoot that Turkey. Well, Mm -hmm. have they really walked the woods and like, kind of got like a, have they, I don't know, kind of, of earned it, it, earned it yeah. in a sense. It, yeah, like there's a, there's a certain way I want my kids to be able to like, yeah, I want them to like do a little bit of the work and then, you know, gradually work your way up to deer. Let's shoot a couple rabbits or squirrels and then let's get you this, this 410 in your hand. And if you, do, you know, if you show some patience, we'll go out turkey hunting and yup, maybe you can go in a couple hours late to school or something like that where like, hey, you've kind of earned this instead of sticking a five-year-old in a deer blind and a redneck and shooting a 150 inch deer. I don't know. I just, to me, some of that rubs me the wrong way and it's just not the way I'm certainly going to raise my kids. Yeah. Watch out, Paul. You're, you're spitting fire. Now people are going to, man, I know. anytime I, anytime I yeah. make a comment about how hunting is getting like almost too easy, whether it's on this podcast or Or, you know, like, or one of my big pet peeves is setting a kid up on like a 170 and, or, you know, set, doing all the work, the kid comes in, they shoot it. And then from there, let's say they get old enough and they, and mom, like dad goes away or uncle goes away and now they're left to do it by themselves. They have no idea what they're doing because someone has set them up the entire time and has made it easy instead of doing what they should be doing. And that's teaching them the strategy. And not necessarily just, hey, go sit here and this turkey's going to come by. So Yeah, one, 100%. I shouldn't spill yeah. my article ideas, but one of the articles I'm going to write this year for sure is touching on how you can make your hunt really easy if you want to. Certain mm-hmm. pe- There's certain people, maybe not you or me, because we don't, if I'm right, you don't own your own land, right? No, do yeah, not. Do, do, uh, so my parents have land, so I'm super grateful for that. And it's pretty good hunting, but I can't directly take control and influence my hunting. I could make the hunting really easy there if I wanted to, if my Mm -hmm. dad would let me, or if like he would let me to take full control, I could make it pretty easy. Like there are spots where I could post up, make a huge food plot right off the woods 
and sit in a blind and go late season muzzleloader hunting and shoot a really nice buck every year. Like that yeah. could happen. Not everybody yeah. can do that, but there are certain folks that, and this is another <laughs> controversial thing. If you have a lot of money and you can buy these awesome properties, there are certain levels to which you can make your hunting really easy if you want to. Yes. That's a, that's a fact. Agreed. That is a, yeah. that is a fact. That's not debatable at all. And so mm -hmm. like, there's that like way of, you know, how do you, how do you want the hunt to transpire? You know, you can make it more challenging on yourself. Like I was, I was actually at the Minnesota deer and Turkey classic a couple of weeks ago and I ran into Jared Mills there. Awesome guy. I love Jared and love just the way he like almost challenges himself, right? Like he uses, you know, stick and string, a, a, um, a long bow or whatever he uses to try to hunt and sits on the ground sometimes and, you know, still passes giant deer and he, he doesn't use like a ton of cell cams and he like purposely kind of makes the hunt more challenging on himself. And I like respect the heck out of that. Um, and so people like that, I, I can get behind and, you know, some of the stuff going on, like just in the industry, it's, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, there, there are certain levels and ways you can make your hunt easier or harder. And Hey, I don't blame people for making it easy. I mean, if my dad or my parents would let me take control 100% of their property and let me do any, anything I wanted to, I would do it all. Cause I would make, I would want to make my hunt easier. So I'm not saying those people are bad <laughs> at all. I would all right. probably go ahead and do a lot of those things, but. Yeah, I, you know, I went off. I had day. a dream yeah. the other day, or not the other day, like the other month. It's it's been a while since I've had it, but I won the lottery in my right. dream, and I bought this gigantic farm, but I didn't allow any type of ground blinds on it. I didn't allow any gun hunting on it, and 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 that all tree stands had to be put up the day of the hunt. <laughs> and I don't know, I, I don't know why it's like, it That's I was a in really this, specific dream. I know it, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> it was like, I had a list. There was a, there was people that I was t like, it was on the wall and I was playing at the wall and I go, here are the rules if you want to hunt my property. And then yeah. I went through and listed them. And then uh, oh, I don't boy. know, it was, just, it was just a really weird dream, but it's probably not that far off of what would actually happen yeah. because I think it would be cool to have zero intel about anything and then just get a farm maybe do some habitat work on it and then end up turning and, and then forgetting about it like not hunting it for a whole year maybe two years and then that third year going in blind and trying to see what what's all in there i don't know that that's off topic but yeah but yeah yeah no, so I, I... all right more turkey hunting gear shot. We've, we've talked about our shotguns and things like that. Do you have any piece of turkey hunting gear that is turkey specific or is most of the gear that you're using kind of cross over into deer hunting as well? Yeah, a lot of it crosses over, but I do last year I did, or two years ago, I bought a nice turkey vest. I think it's yep. like an older, like night and hail. I, okay. I don't even know, are they still like in business, but I found one on Amazon and I got it and it's a really nice one. I love that Turkey vest. Um, yeah. so yeah, night and hail, I think is who makes it, but yeah, it's honestly, it's a really good way to stay organized. Um, I do carry like a backpack with me cause I'll put some of my yeah. bigger stuff in there and food and snacks and stuff, but I really do like having, um, all the pockets handy and stuff like that. I haven't mastered like a mouth call yet. And so I'm yeah. still using like old school calls that I got from like learn to hunt back in the day. Yeah. Like honestly I am and they sound great and they call in turkeys and man, I, I don't know. I don't see much of a reason to change from that, but yeah. So besides like obviously a turkey specific shotgun, a turkey vest, um, a couple decoys here and there. Like, yeah, I, I, I haven't invested too much into like turkey hunting. I just haven't found the need to really. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I mean, other than a, I have a Turkey, it's a hybrid. It's uh, currently it's a, a Turkey. It's like a vest backpack, but it has a steel frame in it. So when I sit down, I don't have to be against a tree. I can lead. It's like two L bars in it. So I can oh, lean nice. back and relax in it. And I've had yeah. that for Lord. I want to say like 15 years. It was one of the first things I bought. I mean, I think I probably bought it like somewhere around 2004, 2005. 
some, yeah. somewhere in, in that time frame. And I still have it. There's a couple broken zippers on it. I mean, it's it's definitely well used, but yep. it allows me to take like carry my decoys in, in it. It allows me to carry all my uh, food. It's a I believe it's a Cabela's brand. I think I, I bought it online from Cabela's all that all that time ago or, or at a Cabela's discount shop or something like that. Anyway, it's, it's a Cabela's brand. And it allows me to carry everything I need. It's got a little pouch for my uh, shotgun shells and it's got a pouch for my mouth calls that I never use. And so I, yeah. you know, just like you, all I, all I use is slate calls. It's yeah. just, I Dude. get them, try to get them as close as possible. And yeah. then I shut up. And then if they come in, down, you know, yeah. get your gun, yeah. get ready. Yeah. I still, you know what I love is using the, the Quaker boy Yelper, the push button. Oh Yelper. yeah. The push button one. Dude, I yeah. love that because what I don't like about when they're getting in close and you want to keep them coming, you know, like using a slate, obviously two handed and you try to keep your gun up on your knee or something. Yep. I love the Yelper because I can hold my gun maybe with my right or left hand up on my elbow and then just with one hand use that push button Yelper. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I love that thing. People are yeah. going to laugh and think that is so stupid, but man, it, it gets the job done. I, I love that thing. Yeah. Well, they used to have, I, I'm pretty sure they still have it, but uh, that Yelper used to have a gun attachment to it where you could, I, I, I don't know if it's the brand you're thinking of, but there was, you, you could put it on your gun and with your hand that you're holding it, you could hit the, hit the button on it or the stick on it and it Crazy. would make the noise. So uh, that way you could have two hands on your gun at all time. I've yeah. never, I've never been good at using a mouth call. And I, I can remember one year I practiced quite a bit and I was still like spitting it out of my mouth when I was trying to get too aggressive and turkeys <laughs> would run away. And I can remember my uncle going, man, Hey, uh, why don't you stick to that slate call and let me do, and then I'll do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a nice way of saying you totally <laughs> suck. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. So uh, other than turkey calls, I mean, all of my clothing, is all crossover right i don't even i don't wear camo pants uh usually i wear like these thick denim uh like dickies or the brand that i like to use is arbor wear um and or huntworth has a uh huntworth has a couple pair of solid color pants that are really that are really durable and so i, I look for really durable things because you're walking through a lot of thorns or or yep. you know sharp sticky things and uh, I, I want that i want that durability uh for that but then the tops any camo it's deer hunting camo right yeah and yeah. so same here yeah i have like uh i have a sitka like for really warm turkey hunts um because actually with the spot i hunt up here um by green bay gets really good the week before Memorial Day, like really good because it just gets tall grass and there's bugs everywhere, you know. And I love my core lightweight hoodie from Sitka yeah. and the pattern. I love that Optifade subalpine pattern for turkey mm -hmm. hunting. That is a sweet yeah. pattern. Um, but this year I have I have some of that Coda Silence stuff. I, you've heard of them, right? The yeah, dude. I've I've yeah. looked at some of their stuff and it looks pretty cool. It's I love their pattern and I have first season turkey hunting. Uh, I have a first season up here and then I have that week before Memorial Day and I love the Coda Silence stuff. It's whitetail gear, but it's going to look really good in the early season turkey woods where there's no green yet. Yeah, I'm super excited to wear that stuff. Um, and it's really I need, a, too. I need an honest opinion out of you, though. OK, you tell me the truth. I like I like their gear, but the fabric that's on it. Yeah. Does it pick up every single thing like burrs, thorns? Yes. It does. Yeah. It see, does. Man, you know, I love, I love it, but yep. man, that's, that's a huge like turnoff. That's why I don't wear those sick, yep. uh, those sick of fleece pants anymore. Yep. The fanatic. Yeah. It collects everything for sure. It does. You know what I'm going to try though? I, mm -hmm. I was at that Minnesota deer and turkey classic a couple weeks ago um the burr paw have you seen oh that? yeah i need to yeah. pick one of those up my buddy byron horton he keeps he keeps telling me i dude you got to pick up the burr paw i i got i got one and it works on all your clothes i just haven't i just haven't bought one yet okay so i bought one they had a show yeah. special and i bought one 
and my wife's like you idiot it's what are you doing like um she didn't actually say that she, she's probably thinking it but it was like only 20 bucks and i'm like screw it i'm gonna give this thing a try i've seen a lot of reviews i think it popped up as like a sponsored ad once on facebook or instagram yeah. like dang that's cool um so i bought one and i'm gonna use that but yes the code of silence stuff does it attracts a lot of burrs and they it's a pain for sure um yeah. so there's like that give and take of staying ridiculously warm but also coming back looking like a burr you know yes yeah. yeah yeah i feel for you sure. okay uh decoys do you use decoys do you have any favorite decoys <laughs> i laugh because i i have no idea if decoys are hurting or helping my hunting Understood. i don't have i i should you know what i should do is probably find like a ridiculously good turkey hunter in the green bay area and go with one so if somebody's listening to this and they want to take me turkey hunting and guide me they should probably do it because i can't i'm terrible with reading body language of turkeys to find out if the decoys are hurting or helping mm -hmm. yes i usually do use decoys um i have like a half strut jake from avion x and then a a flambo like looking like lookout hen or whatever mm -hmm. and that's what i typically use and i well I, yeah. I do have a full strut tom too um yeah so i'll use those i don't know i've never like experienced the turkeys running up and like destroying the decoys and pecking at i've never like had that um yeah i'm sure i will sometime but i just haven't probably turkey hunted enough to experience that but um i don't know maybe yeah. my birds are really pressured and don't I, I yeah but yes i usually do use decoys yeah well i'll tell you what L let me tell you how serious well take this with a grain of salt because i i own a what is it it's it's a flex tone full strut um and then i i have two uh hen decoys that are man they're like 10 15 years old as well right i mean they have holes they have holes in them where the you know the the tom got too close to the decoy or the the tom came up uh the decoy was in my line to the tom and i pulled the trigger and, and you know some of these decoys yeah. have actually been shot a couple times and so and so i ended up uh i ended up having buying that flex tone to see what would happen and i i don't know i i think if i had to guess that the tur the decoys actually help the the turkeys come in but i feel like the margin or the percentage is 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 way smaller like yes i believe it helps but just by this much right yeah. like if they're hand up there's nothing you can do no to no to change their mind and i think if you you have to get that like dominant tom like if yeah. if you if he sees it and he's not with a hen he's probably coming like yeah that's you know from my experience from seeing and hearing and talking to other people like i just have yet to you know i apparently run into a really dominant tom but um yeah i mean i would say there's certain situations where i'm i haven't taken them mm -hmm. and i've been like god darn it if i had my decoys i'm pretty would that have helped yeah, yeah. Would it have? you know i know i know and then there's that positioning of you know if you expect them to come from this direction you want to set it way over to this way because if they hang yeah. up then they're still in your zone you know so there's yeah. all that to do and that's i'm still like trying to learn all that which is really fun um but it can be kind of frustrating and it's like man am i doing the wrong thing or is this truly yeah. head down, am i headed down the right path or not it's yeah sometimes it's just kind of tough to know you know yeah for sure i i tell the story every turkey season uh and uh you remember todd pregnance right from yeah. white knuckle productions all right so he was mowing his ditch one day and he hit a turkey decoy that someone threw in the ditch and so it was literally chopped i mean it was almost chopped in half and Great. so um a couple of days after that i filmed him hunt this seven or eight bearded tom come in and at the time it was the largest turkey ever killed with uh, the largest atypical turkey ever killed with a bow it was crazy oh, and and but it came in to this jalopy 
of a <laughs> of a call. I mean, it was, dude. It was or of a of a decoy. A, a decoy. And it, I mean, we had an arrow sticking all the way through it, so it would slide down as the day or the wind would hit it. It would slide down to the ground. Yeah, and, but it came in and he shot it, and so That's it crazy. It, yeah, it just kind of tells me that you could probably get a black ball and yeah. put it in the middle of a field, like a, yes. one of those workout balls, and they would come into it. Yep. Yep. For sure. I know. And that's the frustrating part too, right? Is you yeah. like, you spend all this, or, you know, I don't spend a ton of money, but people spend all this money on, you know, DSD decoys and all these other things. And those are probably help in most cases, but yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. You could probably put a bowling ball in the middle of a <laughs> black, a black bowling ball in the middle of a field. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude would you like i'm just going to ask you as uh, do, would this interest you i have turkey fans in my garage like three of them that i don't have hung up on, on a wall if i somehow attached a turkey fan to a bowling ball and set it in there do you think i could call in a tom into that decoy and shoot him oh for sure Oh dude, yeah, I gotta do it. I gotta find a, would, a used black bowling ball now. Yeah, I think we're on to something here. I think you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted, right? Challenge accepted. Yeah, do it. Do it. Yeah. Make a make a video out of it or something. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it works. Um yeah. And so like decoys are good. I have them just because I have them. Uh yep. I'm, I'm yep. not I'm not sure if I'm doing them right. I don't know how. I mean just like everybody has written including yourself and me we've written articles about how to hunt deer during the rut how to do this how to you know like all the all that stuff yeah. and i'm sure if you go out and you do your research you can find articles and videos about all this turkey hunting strategy but for the guys that are just like i just don't care like i yeah. love turkey hunting now but yeah. i just don't care about the other stuff that goes for sure that goes along with it so and and i think the problem with like a lot of these things that i've written about and you have too is there's always caveats to it right and right. then at the end of the at the end of the article you always have to have, have like a disclaimer almost that says depending on your situation yeah. you know, <laughs> like, and that's that's what's yeah. tricky is because it literally does depend on your situation yeah. and so yeah. you can take all this advice but like if you have really high pressured birds or if you have this factor or that factor influencing your turkey hunting or I, right. I, I don't know, there's caveats to all of it. There's advice that's really good, but sometimes it's not always going to be 100% applicable to your situation, which makes it, makes it yeah. tricky. That's where you have to just go out and fail and succeed and do things on your own too, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, are there any other products as far as turkey hunting is concerned that you you want to talk about or bring up oh man i don't know um blinds is always like right turkey hunting in a blind can almost be like cheating when it works sometimes yeah because yeah, sometimes. there's i have not had good luck turkey hunting in a blind and this isn't like some odd topic that i'm bringing up or like some new product that somebody wouldn't think about but i just wanted to like bring it up because i just i have not had good luck turkey hunting in a blind now maybe i have like a, so there's a lot of birds where i hunt but maybe they're super pressured and like accustomed to not like wanting to come in the blinds because they get mm -hmm. shot i don't know if they think like that i don't know if they're that smart i highly they probably aren't and maybe i'm yeah. just bad but i i always have more success when i'm just tucked in the ground like hidden away just in the weeds you know what i mean like i'm not going to be yeah. seen at all and so i don't know i i go back and forth whether i want to use blinds or not and this year i don't think i'm going to um no. mainly because one blew away and broke <laughs> but yeah um then i don't want to spend the money on a new one but um i that's something i go back and forth with too just like decoys is whether to sit right. in a blind or not you know and i, I kind of want it to I just like sitting up against a tree too. You know, it's just, it yeah. feels more, or more, uh, just I feel constricted in a, I feel constricted in a, in a blind. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't see yeah, much. You, yeah. I don't know. You're just not out in the fresh air and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, you know, 
I, I one thing that's I didn't bring up about my gun that I was was a requirement for me when I bought a shotgun is it had to be a camo gun. My oh, dad, yeah. my dad swore by like not, he just was highly encouraging me. Like you need, you should get a camo gun. Those things can see a shiny. Don't take an Aquafina water bottle with you because they're gonna freaking yep. see that from 400 yards away. You know what I mean? Like yep. I don't yep. think you can overstate it how well they see. And so that was something I for sure wanted a camo gun. I didn't want that shiny blue of the gun to be sticking out. You know what I mean? And so that's something that, that you know, that could be overrated too, but. I don't know. I've, I've gotten busted by turkeys when I was younger and I'm like, mm -hmm. did I even move? You know what I mean? They just see so well and they're, and some of them are really, really spooky. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, don't have a camo gun and I and still probably, have shit. You're probably fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And I did, I've smoked a ton of turkey with yeah. them and uh, yeah. I don't know. We always give them, we always give the animals that we hunt way too much credit, but I will say this, that I get, I get frustrated by deer, but I get really frustrated by Turkey, especially if they're close, but they're not, they're not coming the rest of the way in. I have a one spot in particular where I was, you know, I, I'd sit down it's in the woods and I watch them. What they, what they do is they roost in this, old oak stand on a different property they walk through this cattle pasture and then they make their way onto the property that i hunt and i'm, I'm right there on the fence line and i'm you know trying to you know trying to cut them off before they get into the on, into the other set of woods and i don't know how many times i've been so close and they just hold up right outside of range you know clear shot they just need 10 10 or more more yards and i just get frustrated and it's not because it's just i think it's because i am I, i've i've put all this energy to do something that i don't really care if it works yeah. out or not but it's so close and then it, i don't know I, yeah no um, it's so true because like with big deer you don't tip you don't just go out and see them every time you hunt so there's not that frustration. It's almost like a man, you know, I'm going to give it my best effort. I'm probably realist, realistically, probably not going to see this giant buck, but with mm -hmm. turkey hunting, you see turkeys pretty much every, I mean, at least I do. Like I'm lucky to see turkeys pretty much every time I go and they're right there. And it's just, they're not quite close enough, but you have a taste in your, like you can almost taste it and feel mm -hmm. it and get them, but you don't. And so then it makes it more frustrating. Whereas deer hunting, like I said, at least sometimes you stand, you feel like you stand no chance. And so you're in your mind, you almost convince yourself like, mm, probably not going to see him anyway. So right, might right. Well accept that fact, at least like mm -hmm. I try not to let that creep in, but sometimes that's the case. Right. But right. turkeys, they're, they're right there and they're hanging up 10 more yards out of range. And you know, that's what can be really frustrating. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, usually when I go turkey hunting, the bugs aren't too terribly bad. Now I, I have been where the ticks are, uh, out, out. And I have had times when I've gotten chiggers real bad. So yeah. I am going to make sure that this year I spray down my clothes with permethrin and yep. make sure that I'm like, I don't want, I, I, this, this is no joke on my shins, like below my knees to my ankles from setting trail cameras this past i think it was august yeah i went into a property and set a whole bunch of trail it could have been july dude i still have scars on my legs from chigger bites and i don't i don't want that anymore I, i've been too lazy with that i i gotta treat my clothes yep yep that's uh my mom got chiggers really bad hunting or uh, camping a couple years ago and uh now when i'm hunting I bought a bunch of that Sawyer, saw so like the red, the, it's a yellow and black bottle, the Sawyer brand mm -hmm. permethrin. I sprayed, yeah. I've been spraying my clothes for turkey hunting. Um, I, I don't love to do it just cause I use some of that stuff for deer hunting. Um, so typically I'll just do like my, like the bottom of my pants, like at areas where they would maybe crawl into or latch onto. Um, yeah. so like certain parts of my pants or my sleeves and stuff like that. But 
I have, I've heard some serious horror stories of like ticks and all that. And yeah, I do not want any part of that. So if I'm, you know, I, I don't know, I'm extra cautious about that now, especially that since I have kids, it just, you know, it just changes yeah. your that on, on some stuff. And when I take them, like their clothes are going to get sprayed and, uh, I, I let them sit out and dry and then they say they can go through like three or four washing cycles and still stay active in the clothing, you know? So yeah, that's something I forgot to bring up that I, I definitely use permethrin. Yeah. Outside of that, I mean, my turkey hunting gear list is very short, right? I got two slate calls that are tied together by an old boot, boot lace. Yeah. I have one striker that I use for both of them. I have a 20 gauge pump Mossberg and now I have a 410 that my kids will use and I have a couple old decoys that's it like yeah. I don't I don't I'm not I don't have a garage full of turkey hunting stuff like I have deer hunting stuff yeah same here one thing I forgot to bring up about clothing is mm -hmm. I I really like wearing a face mask for yep. bow for bow hunting and turkey hunting I and that's yeah. just a visibility thing like I I'm kind of a freak about wearing a, a face mask. Um, I yep. still have like an early season scent lock suit that I wear for turkey. Oh, yeah. I think scent lock makes like the best uh, face mask for hunting, turkey hunting, whatever. Like you can have, it has that cord that you can tighten on the back. Mm -hmm. I love that thing. So I, that's one thing I don't ever go to the turkey woods without is that face mask, whether I'm wearing like a different brand. I would upper and lower. I always bring that face mask with me. I love that thing. But yeah, yeah, other than, you know, the basics, like I'm super, super simple when it comes to turkey hunting. And I just take, you know, the same gear every year. And that's, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm not spending a fortune on, on turkey hunting gear. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on that note, I have, I think it's just one hoodie from Huntworth, but it's got the built-in face cover for nice. it, dude. That, that makes it so easy when yeah. it's built right in that apex hoodie that you have. I think it yeah. has a built in face guard in it too. Yes. By the way, uh, if anybody here hunts Michigan public land and has run into a apex hoodie from Sitka with, <laughs> with a, my tags and license in it, I lost that uh, a handful of years ago when I hunted was bow hunting Michigan. And I lost that apex hoodie walking out of the timber one night and I've, and so it's out there in public land somewhere. So you can keep it. I just want, I just want to know who, who it's, found it. You just want closure. It's on, yeah, I want some closure. <laughs> it's, it's displayed in somebody's hunting mantle. Like I have Dan Johnson. They have like a, the nine figure Chronicles logo and they have it printed on their like trophy wall. Look what I found. I got Dan Johnson's Ditka hoodie. Can you believe That's it? That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> well, um, outside of that, man, this is a very low key episode when it comes to what you're going to learn about hunting gear and equipment. Yeah. Uh, turkey hunting. Yeah. I don't take it serious. Therefore, my gear is not as serious, but I still have a lot of fun going out especially now that i'm taking my kids out so um any any closing thoughts paul no i would just encourage everybody to you know everybody listening is probably a pretty hardcore deer hunter too just go out and have fun and yep. enjoy the woods and yeah i mean that's that's what i try to do i try to keep it low-key for turkey hunting and i should probably try to do the same with deer hunting but um yeah good luck out there to everybody and yeah didn't teach you much today but um yeah no turkey hunting we had a good, good time hunting. anyway it's uh yeah go out there have fun and shoot straight all right take care man i appreciate your time thanks dan always good to chat